Okay, so uh, share screen. Um, here we go. All right, so remember when I was talking at the beginning about- um, You're not getting it. You're not getting it? Oh, I see, we're not. Share screen. Okay, are you getting it there? Yep. Okay. So I remember at the beginning, I was talking about, I, I was trying to figure out what uh, diameter I should have for, for having this piece of wood fly around the lathe. So this rectangle represents the cross section of the wood I'm using. It's three inches across here. And it's, uh, the height varies between, I can make it three quarters of an inch and I can go up to an inch. If you buy inch boards, it's usually in that range. So I, did, I didn't do it with graphics to start with. I did the calculations to try to figure out what, these, uh, what this distance should be from the center of the axis, from the axis of symmetry of the lathe to the board. Notice if your board is an inch thick, it should be uh, 0.625. What is that, 5 eighths of an inch? Which means that the diameter of the circle would be 1.25 inches. Now, I don't want to hollow through 1.25 inches. I mean, it's possible, I suppose, but I didn't want to do that. So I thought, well, what if it's three quarters of an inch? In that case, you want the center to be 1.125. That's one and one eighth of an inch from the top of the board. And that gives you a hole to hollow through of 2.25 inches, which sounded pretty good. And really um, what I could have done when I made my wooden jig, remember it, I made it so it came just tangent with the um, um, beal um, extension. I could have made a little like an eighth inch gap or so there and made it a little bit wider and I would have had a little bit more space to hollow. But I find that inch and a half is fine. That's plenty. Um, anyway, so you can see if I go here, if I fiddle around until I get, I want to get 1.75 here. It's about, about there. A little too far, but it's about there. So what that means is if I go from corner to corner of the board, then uh, I can have a depth of 0.862 inches from the top of the board to the bottom of the cut. So that's, that's what that's about. And the other thing I'm going to talk a little bit about was, um, let's see if I can do this. Oh yeah, here's the, here's the board. Here are the dimensions for the board. By the way, this is on the web. Um, if you go to our web page, you'll, you can find this uh, demo, under demo handouts or something like that. So it gives you the dimensions and, and the distances. Um, and here, this graphic is supposed to show the following. Remember, I first cut, I hollowed it, then I, then I cut the outside. So forget these little lines on the edges here first. And that's kind of what it looked like. So that's what it looked like. Notice this gap here, or this distance across here is much less than what the actual thickness is. So that's why I cut it the second time. That's why I um, remounted it and did a different radius and cut again. That way, the thickness here is the same until you get up here and then it thins down. Then when I sanded it, it just kind of smoothed out these corners. Um, let's see, is there anything else I want to say about that? I think that's all I want to say about that. Unless there's a question. Okay. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so the jigs I made myself, the, this uh, round sanding piece, uh, you can get it at the standard supply places. Um, as far as the, this jig. Oh, I guess I need to get out of here, don't I? Stop share. Um, this jig, um, you can get these beal extensions from most uh, wood turning places. Again, these U bolts should be three inches across, five inches long. Um, I guess that's it. Are there any questions? Could you make four spoons, two of them being smaller in size? Yeah, could you do four? I've thought about that. Um, the reason I don't do four is because I want to make these three inches and the gap here between is not three inches. Or I, I've turned the wrong way. The gap below here wouldn't be three inches. So that's why I don't do 
four. I thought about doing three, um, but I thought that would be kind of complicated. I, you could do it. The problem though, is if you do four or three, you're not gonna be able to watch where you're cutting because it'll be all closed up. So I don't recommend doing that. I think doing two and do at a time is pretty efficient. Um, you can see exactly where you're cutting and it makes it really nice to, yeah. um, to turn the, or to hollow the inside. Thank Which you. Good, I think. Other questions? Do you put any kind of sealer on the, or anything like that on the spoons? I couldn't hear that. What Steve? was that again? Do you put any kind of sealer on the spoons? Oh, what do I finish? use to finish them? I, I leave them alone. Um, I used to use the Beal buffing system, but I've decided that there's really no point because um, after, no, I'm right here right now, aren't I? Oh, I'm here? I'm sorry, I was looking the wrong place. Okay, so um, I used to use the Beal buffing system and that makes it shiny. Um, if you sand it to about 600 grit, it looks really nice. It's not as shiny as it would with the wax on it. But the way I look at it is, if you're gonna use this for stirring pots and things, that wax is gonna come off pretty quickly. So my, my strategy now is just to go ahead and make them wood, nothing else added. And then I can advertise that they're all natural. Of course, carnauba wax is natural too, but with no finish. And it, they look pretty good without a finish. The ones that I showed um, when, I, when we first started, what was in the background, um, those have no finish on them. Other questions? Neil, uh, the uh, jig that you use with the Beal extension, couldn't you just get a block of wood and uh, then uh, tap uh, one end of it and screw it into your headstock? You probably could, but I think this would be much more stable. I think the aluminum would be uh, more solid. I think the block of wood would give you more vibration and um, I would trust this quite a bit further. Um, the, the, the Beal extension is fairly inexpensive. It's $25, so $26. So um, I felt like that was a pretty good investment for it. But, but you probably could. That was my original intention was to thread the wood and put it on there. And, and then the more I thought about that thing spinning around at 1500 RPMs and I, the less I wanted to do that. You, you got the Beal extension at Woodcraft? Or you go yeah, I don't remember where I got it, but they have it at Woodcraft. They have it at, I know they have it at Woodcraft, Rockler, um, Grizzly, right. Amazon has it, what did you say? Craft, Craft supply, yeah. So it's pretty, they're pretty easy to find. This, oh, and I wanted to say too, this uh, um, air, whatever it's called, sanding dome. It's, uh, uh, let me show you a box. I actually bought a kit and it's called the Guinevere uh, Flexible Finisher King Arthur's Tools. Um, the kit that I have actually comes with uh, a straight one too or a cylindrical shaped one, which I haven't used. And I wouldn't have gotten the kit, except I just got this like a week ago and I wanted to get it before the demo. Now they had this and I could all, or I could have gotten just the uh, $59 dome sander, uh, but they wouldn't deliver it until this week. And so I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and get the whole kit. Okay. Other questions? Neil, this was phenomenal. It was great. Oh, thank you. These are a lot of fun to make. They're a little scary at first because when you're hollowing out there a foot away from the headstock, it makes you a little nervous. But I've done enough now that I'm pretty confident that it's safe. Yeah, I thought uh, Andy's comment was really right up there. It was good that you found a mathematician to put all this together for you. <laughs> Anybody could have done it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Any other questions? Great. Neil, that was just a, a great demo. Very interesting, very innovative. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Oh, I have a question. Uh, Neil, you said that you make the little, uh, <clears throat> from the cutoffs of the handle, you, what is it that you make from there and yeah. uh, how much do you get for them? Okay, here's the things I make from them. Um, one, you know, I'm, you know, the tippy tops I make, um, I need little pieces to make stems. So sometimes I use them to make the stems of tippy tops. A few I make that way. Um, I also make, uh, refrigerator magnets and I make them look like little mice looking out at you. 
Um, I'd make little penguins sometimes. Uh, I make little pigs, either refrigerator magnets or just that they sit there on the, on the desk. Um, Christmas trees, I made Christmas trees this year. So I, in fact, they were little ornaments, little Christmas tree ornaments. Um, I guess those are the main things I've made with them. Oh, and you ask how much I sell them for? Um, it depends. It depends on how fancy I make them. But some I sell for um, six dollars each, or two for ten. Um, some I sell for fifteen dollars each. So the ones, and probably I sell most of mostly the uh, two for ten. So five dollars each. For each of these, I can probably get I don't know five or six, five or six. Um, of those, so that's 50 or 60, so is that right? Do you have five or six, so it'd be five times five, 25, $30, I mean, that pays for the board. So just one of these pays for the board. Other questions? Great. What's the length of the board again? Uh, one foot. Yeah, I cut them into, uh, they're, they're inch boards, I make them one foot long, um, just under three inches wide. The reason I, I, I started making them three inches wide, but I make them just under that because the U-bolts uh, are three inches. And if you make them three inches, they're awful tight fit. So I like it just a little bit looser than that. So I make them two and seven eighths generally. You know, good demo. Um, when you were sending the outside of the, the spoon, you were on a disc. Have you ever tried using maybe like a flapper wheel? Cause it tends to leave a little bit smoother. You know, it doesn't leave the flat spots. Yeah, what did you say? I didn't hear what you said. What, what did you say? Flapper did I try? Flapper wheel. Uh, I don't, I, I wouldn't use the flapper wheel. I think what I would use instead is this expensive thing I just bought. <laughs> that is this uh, cylinder that's inflatable because oh, okay. I think this would do a nice job on it. I could also use the, um, the dome shape one. The dome shape one would probably work pretty well too. Flapper wheels are tend to be kind of expensive too. So I, I tend to stay away from those probably. Okay. And really the original ones I just did by hand. The first, I don't know, 20 or so, um, I just used 80 grit sandpaper and did it by hand. And it, it didn't take very long. It just took a little while. Other questions? Neil, did you consider using your uh, printer to print uh, your inflatable drums? Using the TPU filament? I, I haven't thought about that. Um, you'd have to put some kind of a, I guess I could do it probably. You could put, uh, you make a cylinder and then uh, you'd have to coat it with some kind of a soft material of some sort. Just give it a little, make it have a little give. Your, your TPU filament is, is soft. Oh, uh, I've never, I've never tried that. It's, it's more like rubber. It would not have to be inflatable. That would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, you'd have to, yeah. Yeah, that might be worth doing. You'd still have to um, either make it a standard size so you could buy the cylindrical sandpaper or you'd have to make your own cylinders, which yes. probably wouldn't be that hard. For you. Right. But I haven't tried that. It's a good idea. Move a little bit. Let me know I keep, when I keep moving the wrong direction. <laughs> 